So I'll try to explain what, what the experience is when doing an NAD IV. So most of the, a lot of the, of the residues from these, from medications and drugs, etc., <clears throat> pass through the intestinal lining. And the cells around the intestines, there's, it's a term called the enteric nervous system, which also produces the same neurotransmitters, brain hormones, as our brain does. So when you're experiencing the IV NAD, a lot of discomfort um, ex is experienced in the abdomen. And the IV drip is uh, adjusted to tolerance, what the person can experience without too much um, kind of cramping and nausea. So usually the first two, three, four NAD IVs are very, very slow because of this discomfort. There's a few things that can be done uh, in terms of herbs which we use to decrease nausea, and also those herbs also help for gallbladder, liver detoxification as well, primarily artichoke and various herbs, and a mix called bitters. <clears throat> so our first, so before we start any <clears throat> IV NAD, I've already gone through all the pur <clears throat> purification therapies and getting the biochemistry and the hormones balanced so the person is we're adjusting underlying causes of symptoms. So once that's been done, and I, some, to some extent, and assess where they are based on drug history and use and symptoms, we usually start with 750 milligrams of NAD for the first drip. And that first drip can last anywhere between five, maybe six, maybe seven hours, but um, that's our starting dose. Um, and I think that's probably true for a lot of clinics, just to see what the person's response is. So, and it may be that when they come in the next day and they tell us how they were the, for the 24 hours or 18 hours after the IV of NAD, we might adjust this dose. We might go up to 1,000, we might even drop down to 500, uh, but we're kind of adjusting the dose each day uh, to how the person is responding and how how well they feel when their chemistry and hormones are really much more in balance, their liver is functioning well, their bowels are moving well, the lymphatic system is flowing. All the preparation before the IV NAD means that they can probably take, you know, higher doses. Uh, the most we've ever gone up to is 1,500 milligrams, but in some cases we have to kind of taper it down to 500 milligrams. So I'd say the average dose is probably 750 milligrams. So it can be intense for people, especially if they've not gone through some cleansing beforehand. A lot of people that reported a lot of nausea, even vomiting during the IV NAD, is because these pathways of detoxification were not open. Their body was not able to eliminate the residues of these drugs, of the drugs. They can get it out of their cells, but they can't mobilize it. They can't move it out of the system. And they just can't take the higher milligram dosing of, of NAD. Um, there's the idea that over time, our production of NAD declines. <clears throat> At a young age, we have quite a bit of NAD um, pool, so to speak. But over time to maybe 50 years old, that great maximum pool of NAD has declined over the years for various reasons, nutrition being the primary reason and also uh, abusing the body so that the mitochondria are not functioning anymore and the NAD production goes way down. There's certain nutrients that can certain, certainly um, you know, help to slow down that decline, uh, but a lot of people uh, in their choices of food and foods that are available to us from uh, farming, you know, corporate agricultural farming, uh, don't provide the nutrients uh, for the NAD, the, the nutrients that do contain NAD. So that's pretty much an overview of our approach, what happens during the NAD, and why it's so important to get the, the pathways of detoxification, purification working well, so the person doesn't feel so bad, badly, after the, during and after the IV NAD.